All right, Pax West, are we ready for our finale run? All right, coming up, we have Halo CE Legendary ran by Sloth SG. Sloth, take it away. Cool. Hello, everyone. I am Sloth. I think I'm on the PAX schedule thing. It put me as cloth, but um, <laughs> not me, unfortunately. So if you're expecting that, I am sorry. Um, I am the current legendary world record holder for this game. So hopefully I can uh, <laughs> do well enough in a live setting. <laughs> Uh, I'm joined here by three great people. Can you uh, introduce yourself? Absolutely. I'm Nervy Destroyer. I was, until like a <laughs> week ago, the Easy World record holder, but that has been no longer. Uh, but yeah, you are in for an absolute treat. Sloth, over the last few months, has truly come into his own. I mean, he has truly, I think, become the GOAT of this game. <laughs> like unbelievable what he has been able to do and how far he's taken the record to places we only dreamed. I mean, we were sitting there like, is a 103 possible? This man just got a 102. And then he was on pace, I think, a little bit before this run for like a low 102, just doing stuff that we didn't even think was possible. So I'm very excited to witness this live here today. Yeah. So I'm Kronos, a longtime Halo speedrunner after like almost coming up to seven years now. Jeez. So, yeah, this is a really great run. Like, Halo CE has gone down, like, a lot throughout the years. So it's going to be really amazing what you'll witness here by Sloth. So, yeah. Hi, I'm Wacky, a longtime runner, community organizer, kind of, you know, in the, in the scene for a while now. Happy to be here. First uh, live event. Ooh, me too as well. <laughs> All right, so time is going to start when, I, when uh, Chief gets out of the cryopod. So it'll be about like 10 seconds after I skip the cutscene. So I'll uh, count down from there. All right. Like a five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to jump back into the pod and hopefully get a teleport up. There we nice. go. We are out of bounds. And how much did that save? Uh, about uh, seven seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to do another teleport into this load zone. Yeah, and those you're going to see a lot of those teleports. Essentially, when you intersect with a piece of geometry, the game freaks out and is like, you're not supposed to be here, so it sometimes shoots you very far. It's hard to see sometimes, but we'll point out some places where you'll see just how far it is. Yeah, now we're going to back out of here. We don't actually have to go see keys. It kind of just to the cutscene if we just exit the trigger. He's going to give us a pistol. Um, if we're too fast, we actually don't get it. Uh, we're just going to leave and not take his pistol. We're going to just toss it on the ground. We would get it here, but trigger doesn't wake up in time for us to get it, so we're just going to assault rifle. We don't actually need the pistol. It's actually advised to not use this on this level. We can just push the enemies out of the way oh. or, or die. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that yep. is unfortunate. Um, complete RNG if you die there. You can get zero to three elites, and then they just smack you. Yeah. So, I mean, it is also legendary difficulty. So, yeah, it is very difficult, and I believe Sloth will make a lot of these uh, difficult combat sections seem trivial. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, this it almost happens through. again. <laughs> I was close. Yeah. And you just get that health pack. So right on now. legendary enemies, do deal 1.8 times damage compared to normal, and they have 1.4 times uh, shields and health. While uh, we have a bit more health than normal, we have uh, about 105 compared to 75 on normal, but it is not that much of an increase. Ooh, bonus frags. Yes. Nice. There's a 30% chance to drop on frags, so that's pretty cool. Now we're just going to be pushing through this mission, trying not to die. Hopefully, get a checkpoint here. Take a bit of an unconventional route here. Okay, we did get a checkpoint, so I'm just going to rush this. Nice. You can just kind of jump through, and that will actually skip a bunch of spawns that would be right here that are quite nasty. I have that guy for good luck. All right, so I'm going to jump here. Go Plasma. Plasmas are very strong in this game. They deal, I believe, three times damage to elite shields, so it just overlaps to their health and defeat and just kills them. 
Yeah, so coming up right here is probably one of the biggest finds in recent times for Halo CE, which is stair skip. So we're going to be using a very old technique called shield bump and bumping out of bounds right here. So from here, it's going to be a lot of out of bounds platforming with the new graphics that exist in uh, the MCC version of the game. So he's able to see the geometry while out of bounds. In Classic, you're not able to do this. And he's going to just platform all the way to skip all of these hallways. There's so many. Nice. And he's going to do a very precise teleport here. So it's basically pixel perfect and input precise. First oh my first god. Oh my god. god. That <laughs> is one of the hardest, not one of them, that is the hardest trick that yeah, we do in this new route. Tech perfect jump mid teleport. So one in 30, one thirtieth yeah. of a second to jump while you're teleporting it is very difficult. Yeah, you have to jump at the exact time you teleport. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he made it look so easy. Like, all, like, it's very, very difficult. It's one of the most difficult tricks in, like, <laughs> speed in Probably the whole oh, franchise, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's one of them, definitely. All right, so the end of the level is coming up, like, in about 20 seconds. I'm not gonna do a quick strat here. I lose most of my runs here, so I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Make it safe. And once we kill these guys, the level should end. And nice. Right. Decent POA except for the death, but you know, not much you can do there. All right. Chief? Chief, so this me? is probably the most boring level in the speed run, but <laughs> we'll try to make it a little interesting. There's going to be a new trick that's never been done in a GDQ here. It saves about two and a half seconds. I know massive. Oh no. <laughs> If I failed, it loses about eight, so, you know, whatever. Does require new graphics. It looks very funny, though. <laughs> yeah, I believe Sloth is the only one that does yeah. this route. It so, is. Um, <laughs> this geometry is actually not here. <laughs> um, I don't know what Saber Interactive was thinking, but uh, a lot of the geometry in this game is not lining up correctly with what Bungie intended. Yeah, so MCC and the Gearbox ports of the game have entirely different geometry at certain sections. So some small, like, intricate things you might have different between the two versions. And physics, it, too, yeah. Yeah, some it will. Different. Like, <laughs> like <changing>. this. <laughs> yeah, so this lots of invisible geometry, for instance. <laughs> the trees are even worse. I'll show that off in a bit. <laughs> it is still pretty... Mm, pretty much a modern marvel that you can run two game engines at the same time and just live swap between them. It's really cool tech. I yeah. wish it was executed just a little bit better, you know? Yeah. All right, coming to this section, this, this section gives a lot of people a lot of trouble. These elites are just going to move completely random based on the Marines, and I need a plasma pistol, which we did get a good one. All I got is needlers. Stick him, just ignore him, run away. That was a little close. And now we're going to save our Marines. Johnson's dead. He'll be back later. Don't worry. Yeah, and... He, he did say shoot him, too. <laughs> he, he did say shoot him, too. All right. That was actually pretty clear. Yeah. And then if we kill five of the six Marines, six can be dead, too, as well. We will not get dialogue in these next three ships. That saves about 15 seconds. And it's very important, because without that, this next skip coming up would be absolutely impossible. So not this drop ship, but the next one coming in... We need to kill the enemies basically the instant they get off the dropship, and this will set up a trick called drop skip. So this one coming in is our first of two dropships that we need to kill them super fast. So Sloth's going to set up a couple of very precise nades here. Should be a plasma on the right side, followed by a frag. Nice, Just like well. that. Nice. So mm -hmm. we, we only want at most two enemies alive for each of these ships. And again, it needs to be instant. Like, that was perfect. You needed to be that fast any slower, and this trick won't work. So we have one more ship that we need to do this for. So we're going to do another set of nerdy lineups. CE's full of nerdy lineups. It's, uh, you need like a PhD to run this game, it feels like. I also jumped there in order to delay a checkpoint just in case this doesn't work. This is very finicky, and we can also get a teleporting grunt. <laughs> he, his head clips into the ground, and then he just teleports into the sky. There he is. Oh, there it is. <laughs> nice. That might have worked. That might have worked. I think you I got it. No. 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 Oh. oh no. No. I think you can revert. Yeah, yeah there no. we go. So that is just complete RNG. The uh, developers actually 
piloted these ships themselves, <laughs> which is why that happens. Okay. You saw what happened when it didn't work. Now, when it does work, that ship that you saw come in over the horizon, this guy would stop trolling. Yeah, he's being a little cringe. If you okay. look up there, back kind of where it came from, it's no longer there. Uh, that's basically overlapping some uh, delete and create script. So it creates that drop ship that immediately deletes it is kind of what's happening, which skips it. And this is now the last ship. And that ship that we skip drops off like three elites, three jackals. It's kind of yeah. a nightmare. It, it is the, the, hard worst it's the hardest ship in the yeah. section. So being able to skip it is pretty nice. Hey, this oh. guy teleported too. That's <laughs> nice. actually faster. So that's pretty cool. And that is the first area. Now, we, you can actually skip this area without killing any enemies. You can just run and not take the Warthog. But the Hog will catch up to the to walking by the time you get inside the tunnel. But it is fast, just killing everything. And honestly, nicely done. That is like... That section probably brings new runners nice. the most grief. <laughs> and he didn't need to die, but he has a 30% chance to get grenades. And we got two, which is pretty huge. So one uh, thing I think we always forget to mention this, so I'm going to mention it now. There's a thing called backpack reloading in Halo CE. Yes. Basically, I'll let you explain it. So I'm going to double tap reload, switch weapons, and then the gun will be reloaded in my backpack. You can also double tap reload and enter a vehicle, and you'll re reload it while entering the vehicle as well. So it's basically uh, a glitch where the game, it just gets confused. You hit reload multiple times, and it's like, all right, uh, I guess... I'm going to juggle like three reloads at once or something <laughs> like that, and yeah. Something that used to be used in the uh, the old route for TB was also using a ground reload, where you would double tap reload and then swap weapons with something on the ground. And what that would do is it would actually preserve the ammo that you have in in the like re reserve pool. So you could have uh, three rockets, for instance. You fire two, reload, and if you do a ground swap, then you can have three rockets again. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was used on a library lasso with the shotgun. It's pretty much needed to do that solo. Ow! Oh! <laughs> Alright, so coming up here is a Warthog Fling. I'm going to use the mechanic of you being invincible while getting out of vehicle. So instead of being splattered, it just launches us into the sky. Get this cutscene by being in combat. Maybe and then we'll save this Marine again. Yeah. That's important later. We, uh, we save a lot of Marines on this level. It's, um, <laughs> yeah. Now we have a super very long driving section to get to basically one of the most notorious parts of the speed run. Um, even maybe slightly less than the first area we saw back there with drop skip. Uh, basically, there's three different areas. This is kind of the open world-esque segment of the game, where there's three areas all full of Marines that we have to rescue. Keyword is rescue. <laughs> um, we'll save one of them. We'll save one of them. The others will uh, have unfortunate things happen to them. How this section works is it's actually, there's no real failure state. There is, but it doesn't, like, make you revert or, like, kind of fail the mission or anything like that. Uh, if you rescue the Marines in an area, that also checks off the list that, yes, that area is complete. But if the Marines were to die in some unfortunate, unforeseen way, who knows, that also marks the area as complete. You can probably guess which one is faster. <laughs> <laughs> there are far more enemies here than there are Marines. There's five Marines. I think there's, like, maybe... 30, 25 enemies in the section, so we can just fling over. We should search the interior of those Backpack reload the sniper. And, uh, yeah, we'll just save the Marines. And we can leave. All done. <laughs> Never thought I'd be applauded for murdering my friends, but all right. <laughs> There is, uh, there is one caveat to this three areas in that whichever one you save last, you can't just kill your allies. You do actually have to clear that one out. So we save, so the last area that we do, we specifically do it because it's the fastest to clear out the enemies. It's significantly less than the other areas. Yeah, this section here has five spirit waves of so the ships that come in. It takes about like maybe three minutes to do, so 
definitely do not want to do this one last. Alright. Did not get instant. We do have to wait for them to be in combat, or else they will get very mad at me if I kill them. This game has a forgiveness system to where if they're in combat, you get one point of aggro. If they're out of combat, you get three. If you have a total of five, they will get mad at you. Yeah, and that's important because if your Marines are angry at you, it will cause them to behave in very different ways. In this mission in particular, aggro Marines are a lot stronger than your standard Marines, so they'll live against the Covenant more likely, and it'll probably, like, potentially softlock the run, so you have to be very careful with how you kill your Marines. <laughs> there is another way to softlock here. If um, I did not get this dialogue here, that would mean that there's a needler stuck in a Marine's dead body because <laughs> the grunt just got trigger happy and just started unloading on him. This is the area where we basically just need to clear out all the Covenant. So the fact that we're getting this dialogue here means that Sloth did everything correctly. We didn't get any funny Marines all acting all Rambo or anything. Uh, they all just... You know, we're rescued. Yeah, and as you can see, there's a lot of enemies in this section. He's just killing with the sniper. Understood. And very clean combat. <laughs> oh, there's a grunt hiding. I'm gonna run these guys over. At least he let you know he was there. He wasn't yes. just hiding in a corner. All right, Stacker, could you please turn around and kill those grunts? Thank you. <laughs> That's another thing uh, about the vehicles in CE. If you so much as tap anything, uh, it just does max damage and kills you. You probably, if you ever played this game in co-op, you probably accidentally killed your teammate a lot. There's one guy. Oh. <laughs> he didn't See, kill they all They deserve them. to die. So they, they couldn't even kill two grunts. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, and that's the end of Halo. We're just waiting for the Pelican to come in and pick us up. We are going to be revisiting aggro mechanics again on the next level uh, using some of the other intricacies of it. Yeah, we'll be saving some more Marines. Which uh, the the modern aggro route uh, that we do for Legendary, I believe, the catalyst was found by you, right? On a random run. That uh, yes. I accidentally mm -hmm. found out that if you hit a dead body, the aggro timer goes back up. <laughs> Shout out so. to uh, Bearface on Twitch as well for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He helped us figure that out with his... Uh, so the route that you're going to see is, like, very new. Like, within the last, I think, three or four years. Uh, two. Two? It might have been late 2021. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we're going to have quite the time here with our Marines. So it's going to be very interesting to see what we do at well, the start. Well, there's five here. Marines here. I don't want to get to five points. And uh, I'll get three for killing one with a sniper. But if you use a nade... I don't even know if that hit. I can't really see because of the light. Oh, no, we're good. Okay, and then this guy will be unwitnessed, and it will not count for any points. So I'm at four right now. So so nades are considered accidental kills, so he accidentally threw some grenades there. Essentially what happened. I'd be lying if there wasn't some catharsis in, uh, in the TNR start. <laughs> <laughs> and this is one of the best Hello. levels in this run. Like, what you're... None of this is easy. It's going to be easy. It's not going to look easy, but I don't know. Maybe Sloth will make it look easy, but there's a lot of very precise things that need to happen. You need to kill all of these enemies in very particular orders. The grunts in particular are very problematic. That elite is not uh, yeah, supposed Yeah, that to be is there. very scary. We'll be fine. Oh, one red. We're fine. Oh. Case in point... Yeah, we're fine. Oh, all the dodges right there. The that shade really doesn't do any damage. Oh yeah, that shade is not. You've made me a believer. <laughs> I'll yeah. stop throwing the nade. Not even close. And now there's more section here. Norm, in the past we used to grab the camo, but now we just run straight through these grunts and just kill everything. Yep. It's very dangerous because now he has to go through these sets of enemies, which is two elites right around this corner. So he throws a plasma to pre-kill them. And now just snipe all of these guys that are here. There's 10 enemies. He's just killing them as quickly as possible while making his way to the trigger. So once he does that with the Cortana line, then the reinforcements start coming in. And it's very important here that the reinforcements live on this wave. Otherwise, he'll have to wait for More. another minute 
for more of his marine allies to come in. So he's going to do this very infamous section of lift fight. This is just beautiful. Just watch. Hopefully. Marine, no. God. The one will live, that's fine. Wow. wow. Not bad at all. Flawless oh, lift fight. Please. That is way harder than it looks. Eight it is. nades, eight <laughs> waves. Yeah, there was well a done. teleporting elite there as well. That's yeah. really hard to, to keep Wait, uh, fast. Where are you going? I think you just shot your marine? Okay. Yeah, okay. no, he's good. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I will be uh, resetting my aggro point timer here. I want to stay at three for the rest of the level. Hi, Johnson. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to blow up this race. Yeah. <laughs> you go. <laughs> so uh, the race, when it's fine, has different geometry than the race when it's blown up. So we can manipulate that to clip inside the race, do some fancy movement, and we are now in the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, we can clap for that. <laughs> we're not quite done yet, though. So now we need to platform over... Can't see. Okay, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> that light is very bright. We need to platform over this basically invisible ceiling, and the game doesn't really like us being out of bounds, so if we do this in a slightly wrong way, we'll fall back in bounds earlier than we want to. This trick is called belly skip because... We're skipping the belly fight section. Thank you. Which is 10 waves of enemies, so that saves around a couple minutes. And now we're back in bounds, completely past that whole belly fight section and a hanger. Very well done. And there were a lot of uh, really blocky, dark uh, boxes outside in the out of bounds part. That's not what we're walking on. It, that has to be practiced for hours and hours and hours to see where you're going because that geometry is completely invisible and very hard to walk on. Yeah, and coming up here is another trick called quad stack. So let's see if he can land these grenades while moving. I cannot see the lineup, but no, that's fine. Yeah, we're good. First yeah, try. There we go. Easy. So you get temporary invulnerability, I think, a few seconds when you pick up an overshield, which is essentially what we did. We picked up that overshield, manipulated that little bit of invulnerability to boost ourselves to the third floor. Yeah, now he has to clear all of these enemies at these, this section. There's a lot of them, and he's just clearing the room as fast as possible. There's a lot of weird behaviors with these guys. They can be kind of random, and once they're all dead, this door opens, and he's able to proceed. That was really good. That's It's hard to clear that room this fast. Nice work. I got a good elite, so we're good. Just before entering the bridge there, you saw him throw a plasma grenade down the hall. What that did was that hit a marine body that was sitting on the ground. And what that's supposed to do is reset the aggro timer once again, because he's trying to keep it at a certain level to speed up the end uh, after we release keys from the prison. Yep. We're just continuing to make our way to the prison now. A couple more enemies to kill on the way, a couple jackals, and then the last room. And very nice collateral. Hopefully we can get a stick on this sort of lead here. Nah. Oh, that uh, lineup is really dark and that light is uh, <laughs> hiding it. There's one more current. Now we're good. There we go. And hopefully this door opens. Um, so now we're going to rescue some more Marines. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to stick him. Hopefully he runs in that room so he doesn't kill keys. He's the only one that matters. Oh, Ooh, boy. What's happening? Oh. Okay, we're good. <laughs> he got him. Oh, we're fine. Needler explosions can chain react plasmas as well. That can get real scary if they get close. Uh, oh, oh, no. We're fine. Okay, we're good. And so that... <laughs> <laughs> Not even close. I need a new PP. <laughs> That's what we call the plasma pistol, by the way. <laughs> Uh, so right there, that was the whole reason why we were kind of manipulating our aggro. It's so that we could make keys angry at us a lot earlier than normally we'd do it right here. But with that, basically this new route, we do it way back there, which is much faster. The reason we want keys to be mad at us is essentially because he doesn't want to talk to us if he's mad at us, which, you know, makes sense. So it's going to skip a whole bunch of dialogue here coming up soon. I'm going to be pulling the sword elites to me. 
There's gonna be three in this room. First one should be right here next to the door. And the other ones have some uh, pseudo random spawns. Now, if you play and this. Yeah. <laughs> he wanted yeah. to. There we go. Yeah, he just wants to kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> he does throw nades against the wall and just. Yeah. He dies. Now, Wait. if you played this game before, you probably don't remember the level quite ending right there, which. Do you want to describe that? Um, sure. So, when we when we did the uh, hanger stack, the the quad nade, we broke the switch that opens the hanger bay, and that's one of the requirements for ending the level early. Um, so, doing that nade jump is going to break the first requirement. The other one is that Keys finishes talking uh, because that is all skip. We get that fulfilled, and the level is just going to end early because there are no enemies present at the end of. TNR. Also, we're running left here. Mm -hmm. They can go have fun. <laughs> There's a downed warthog that we can get early. So we don't have to fight anything. Do you think you're going to need the fill lights turned down for the stack? Uh, no, it's going to be bright because we're using new graphics. Mm -hmm. All right. Also, jumping here saves time. M mainly this hill here. Our speed is reduced when going up or down hills. So while jumping, we're going to be saving about a quarter of a second this entire beach run. That's, that's some big massive, time right Massive, massive time <laughs> So um, the whole reason we can walk this way instead of clearing out the beach is old Bungie actually left us a little warthog over here. So if this warthog wasn't here, we'd probably have to clear, we would have to clear the beach. Yes, 100%. Yeah, and right here, this is silent cartographer. There's going to be quite the amount of tricks in quick succession here. So once we go inside the structure here with the Warthog, we're going to be doing probably a bunch of tricks in less than a minute here. So be ready for yeah, everything that's about to happen. Space. Just run them all over. <laughs> CE physics. Classic CE, getting vehicles where they're not <laughs> supposed to be. Have we got a checkpoint here? No okay, interesting. Oh, oh boy. Good. Clean. Just for marathon safety, I'm going to get the checkpoint here. You never know. Yeah, so right there was the Warthog fling. We just flung through the door before it closed, so we're able to just clip through. We shoot here to skip this cutscene that can appear here, and we're just going to fall down very precisely at the corner to not die of fall damage. And once we land to the bottom, we are hitting this trigger to uh, open the door, and we're going to go all the way back up using... A bunch of grenades here. Oh, so six grenades all stacked up right on top of each other. We're grabbing the in uh, the overshield, jumping, and landing Ooh. all the way up oh top. My God. <laughs> Very good. But yeah, wait, so that's not more. it. We're going to do another set of three grenades with the frags that are just on the ground right here. And jumping perfectly all the way oh. to the top. Perfect. Let's go. Oh, oh, oh. Leaf jump, <laughs> jump scare. Or fine, or fine, or fine. We'll get out here. <laughs> oh no. Okay, one red. One red. It's fine. One red is 25% HP. Bungie tried to scare you with their health, but you know, we're fine. Once we've gone up to the top there and hit the loading done, the there's just a timer at the end of the level, pretty much. I kind of want the Warthog. We'll be fine. <laughs> we'll be fine. Yep. <laughs> now we're just waiting for the end of the level. Just I think he can yeah. chase you all the way up. Here. Nah, he's good. I think he's stuck in that BSP. <laughs> yep, and now we're just waiting for the level to end. The Pelican's just slowly making its way here. And we're just going to drive past all of these invisible guys, jump into the Pelican, and skip the cutscene here. There we go. There we go. Very good. Now, coming up is probably one of the most iconic missions in probably all of Halo, Assault on the Control Room, and also with one of the, I think, one of the most classic tricks uh, in Halo speedruns, uh, the famous Banshee grab coming up. So uh, definitely, I mean, it's it's such a classic trick. It's, it's how old is it now? Uh, it's actually not as old. The main thing is before in the past we did Bridgefall, and Bridgefall was like one of the earliest tricks discovered 
<laughs> and like it has been evolved like so many times. But it was probably around like more recent times, like 2014 ish, if you could call that recent. Yeah, I'm not sure if the exact recent. date, <laughs> but uh, that was when uh, we discovered that you can manipulate the Banshee's AI here to. Uh, well, we can just let Sloth demonstrate right here. <laughs> so specific lineup here. Here's Grunt. Now the Banshee always spawns in the same spot every time. Just crouch. Now we get to a spot. And it flips them out. And there we go. Join. <laughs> Yep, and all that is is just manipulating the elite AI to just drive under the door, and because it's trying to like attack you by just driving into you, uh, it will flip its banshee like way like in a downward direction that will flip the elite out and basically just let you go inside of it. <laughs> At this point. Um Probably no. There's supposed to be a lot of enemies here. We've skipped so many different things that would have spawned them in. Uh, and funnily enough about Assault in the Control Room is, so a lot of levels in Halo, you actually can't do something like this. You, there's a lot of required triggers, things that you need to do in a particular order. Um, but with this level, it's actually a little special. There's only one thing we need to do to end the level that's present basically right at the start. Um, I think there's like one thing you have to do, which you'll wind up doing anything. Uh, excuse me. Anyway, so I am doing a checkpoint here just in case. Yeah, the, we, the only uh, checkpoint on the level after doing that trick. We broke all the triggers and said we have no enemies, but the triggers also control whether we get checkpoints or not. So we don't have any. This is the last one. It's bound to just entering the the space instead of anything in the sequence. So we're, we're trying to carry this through by using projectiles staying in the air, whether that be a plasma grenade or frag or anything like that. As long as something's in the air, we're staying unsafe. And this particular checkpoint will just be carried forever until we want it. Yeah, and that's one of the main reasons why in the past we had uh, like checkpoint glitches occur because of things like projectiles just staying in the air, primarily from needlers. And people didn't know why the main reason it happened for like the longest time until more like a couple of years ago, I want to say, when more and more people started like diving into the game files and stuff and then realizing, oh, if you're in danger, then you won't get a checkpoint here. And we now use that feature for delaying checkpoints and everything. And yeah, it's used all the time. So you probably think I don't, should not be taking the Banshee in here, but we're just going to do some more teleports. So by setting up the Banshee in a particular way, looking all the way down and meleeing in two specific spots, we are now all the way over here. Very nice. And he made that look very fluid. That is, that's pretty hard. And we have another Banshee here. So can you guess what we'll do again? <laughs> Once again, setting up the Banshee. Looking straight down, nice and snug. Two, yeah. two slightly different spots, and Our there's button. the button. Yep, and that ends the mission. <laughs> so once again, just you're intersecting with geometry. Game doesn't like it. Throws you way in a different direction. Yeah, and all the ball. melees and stuff, and all the positioning, it's very precise actually, because like the angle of your Banshee and the positions of your melees determine your direction and the distance you travel with your teleports. So if you are incorrect by even the smallest amount, it can just widely change your teleport. So you have to kind of get used to a certain setup for all of them. Now here we have probably... I mean, this level was like the big twist of Halo, probably what really put Halo on the map. This is 343 Guilty Spark, the swamp level, the spooky level, the level where you realize that things are not quite right, the introduction of the Flood, which is a parasitic being that will basically just assimilate the whole galaxy if you let it. Very, very dangerous to be let loose. 
But the fact that the Covenant are fleeing right there probably does not mean good things here. Yeah, and right here we're going to, in fact, go into the trick called Reveal Skip because we're going to skip all the reveal of the Flood here. So... All that work they put here. into the cutscene. <laughs> yeah. So just kill the grunts to make sure he's able to have shields for this part. We're now in the floor. And we're now past the locked right. door. <laughs> so what, what we do in that trick is great. Uh, we go into the reveal room and then we have to come back out from another side that goes back into that same BSP to then go up. But if we can just clip through and get to the ending part first, there isn't any part of the, the sequence that requires that we have even been there, so we just get in there and leave. And the Flood's just here now. Cool. Peekaboo. <laughs> the game pretty much assumes that at this point... Camo Jumo! Woo! There it is. Let's go. Hardest jump in the game. <laughs> Uh, the reason it's called Camo Jumo is... Who was it? Was it... I don't remember. It was I don't remember. We're going to get so much pressure. Must have been this. Spo, I Spo. think. Okay. Yeah. I think it was Spo, yeah. <laughs> uh, miss, meant to say Camo Jump and uh, typed in Camo Jumo instead and Twitch chat being the <laughs> unhinged hive mind it is. Anyway, it's Camo Jumo now. And it's been that way for years. <laughs> Shout out to Sub Whistle. This is uh, a little nade jump called Sub Nade that will skip a bunch of spawns here. Oh, Not that guy's very scary. To... <laughs> Not oh, even yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, That nade was supposed to kill the pistol guy, but no, we're fine. He didn't get a headshot off. Would have been nice to get his plasma pistol, too. I oh, you got one. one. Yeah, we got one. Yes, this is very important for the end of the level, so you want to pick one up early. This final swamp run is very scary on Legendary. Um, he's going to try to shoot a Marine. It's basically, that Marine really wants to talk to us. By just shooting him, he is going to follow us all throughout this swamp. And his entire role is to be a meat shield. He's essentially going to draw aggro from all the floods so they don't shoot us. Yeah, and this section is extremely difficult. And what we're trying to do here is kill two Sentinels because there's four different end triggers to the mission, although only two exist on Legendary. One is to kill all the Flood, and the other is to just kill your Sentinel allies here. So one of them is way faster than the other, so we just kill our Sentinels here. And that's why we have the Plasma Pistol, so we can just overcharge to hopefully hit one of them. Oh. If not, then, oh, there we go. And yeah, the other yeah. one's kind of in a bad spot. Yeah, so. the really bad spawn. Yeah. Just gonna kill the guys. This ending here is a real pain point for new runners. Learning... Uh, oh, that pistol guy. What weapons you needed to use where, and you know, oh. having really good accuracy tracking the, uh, the Sentinels. There we go. Nice. It takes a lot of practice to get done quickly. Yeah, that Sentinel's like a 1 in 8 spawn, or 1 in 10, so unfortunate, but whatever. You want both of them to spawn next to each other, but there's two flags in the trees. All right. Let's go gambling. Let's go gambling. <laughs> this is the casino level. Um, it's a 1.6% chance to get perfect RNG. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, and this is the level that kills a lot of speed runs for Halo CE because a lot of this run is reliant on getting flood bumps, which is done by having a reviver flood, which is only a 40% chance of getting a reviver. Uh, so we'll be using some of them. So one of them right here, this one is a guaranteed reviver at the start of the mission. So it's very nice to have. And we just shot its arm off so we can just lure it to this door here. And it's going to just try to melee it at us. And when it does, it will get right into the perfect position for us to shoot it twice. So it goes down and bump through this door. Boop. Oh. Yep. So, yeah, and yeah. that's going to be done at a lot of these other doors, excluding one very <laughs> rough door, if you want to describe that, Nervy. 
uh, the door coming or uh, the door coming up. Yeah. Or a shotgun swag. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> so there's a shotgun flood right there. By throwing a frag grenade just behind him, it will basically launch uh, both him and more importantly his shotgun directly at us. And uh, having a shotgun in this game is very important uh, against the flood. It's by far the most effective means of taking them out. But yeah, so. Essentially, what's going on with the revivers is when they fall over, they lose all collision, and when they get back up, they regain it. That's what bumps us forward. Uh, it's not just flood that we can have that happen with. Um, the little what we call popcorn, which are really the little tiny infection forms you'll see scurrying around, um, they can also uh, bump you. How that happens is you'll see these big, you can actually hear them, these big little bulby things, those things. Um, when they explode and make that huge, ridiculous sound, like a big helium balloon, um, it, it will spawn in a bunch of those popcorn flood that I mentioned. Uh, those popcorn flood, when they spawn in, they have collision, which means they can also bump us. However, it is extremely random where they spawn in. So this door coming up is an infamous trick called Carrier Bump, where we're going to try to launch a carrier in front of the door, crouch on them, and pray and hope that a popcorn spawns on top of us to teleport us forward. Very, it's it's a casino. It's this whole level. I will try casino. it once. It, my most amount of attempts, I think it was like 35, so um, <laughs> I will not bore you with that. It's like 12 seconds per attempt. Yeah, and it's like a basically 10% chance to get on average. Not the bad so it is too. pretty unlikely. So let's see what we get here. He's going to throw Frag at this guy. He's going to line up at the back right leg. Nope. Oh, nope. nope. Unfortunate. Never lucky. Yeah. And now he's going to just try to stay alive. The alternative strat here is to just stay far away. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So... I guess another chance to try it again. Do we want to? <laughs> yeah, I mean, ah, go yeah, for it. One more. Go for it. Okay. But yeah, it is a very random trick, and it's probably the main reason why all the sloths runs die. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. it's just completely random. Uh, so yeah, what would happen if it worked was essentially. Um, you wouldn't really see the popcorn spawning right on top of you. You would just immediately teleport forward inside the door, similar to what happened with the flood bump earlier. Yeah, and it saves around, I want to say, 40 seconds? Yeah, about that, 38 to 40. Yeah, so it is pretty massive for a speedrun uh, for this game, especially at the highest level. You're basically just required to land this trick now because that's how far the game has been pushed. Lost, lost, fault. <laughs> it's got shotgun ammo, so mm -hmm. good. Now up here, you're supposed to run to the right, like casually. That's usually what you'll do, but it's actually both faster and insanely safer to just go around this way. There's no enemy spawns and uh, all that nastiness. Yeah, there's a rocket flood on the right side. <laughs> there's many rocket flood. Yeah. There's so multiple. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Have fun with that if you try going that way. But yeah, we just go along the inside line, skip everything, and yeah, very nice peaceful walk instead. <laughs> if you do end up landing carrier bump and go around the inside, there's a small window of overlap where you can soft lock the game. So you got to be careful about that when you're starting to practice the trick, which you shouldn't. Yep. And right here, instead of waiting for Spark to fully open the door, we just do a grenade jump just gives us just enough height to go through this small gap. And now here, this is probably one of the most difficult combat sections coming up here. There's, oh, not the hair, but uh, We're good. We're good. this next hallway is the rocket flood hallway. So there is a rocket flood, there's a bunch of enemies just raining down on you, and you just have to hope to survive here. Uh, if you have good combat, you should be able to survive most of the time. But sometimes it could just be very unlucky. So the let's key. hope for the best. Yeah, the key is to always keep moving, no matter what. Unless there's are some bad spawns. I might die here. Oh, the rocket flood just shot a carrier right there. Oh, we're good. Got our shields back. Good love. Mm. 
Oh, that's scary. <laughs> One shell left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, exactly. Who's <laughs> for? <laughs> Took it more ammo. Mm -hmm. Nice. So now that we're at this section, we're past the big scary part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's just so many flood there. And if you saw, like, the flood that are very scary are generally like the AR flood, the shotgun flood if they're up close, pistol flood, because they can just melt you down extremely quickly. Especially without shields, you'll just die almost instantly. So you have to target those guys first, for sure. Now here we're onto the third floor. Oh. <laughs> A little bit early. Yeah. And he's going to use this one last shotgun shot for some more ammo here from these flood here. This is a couple guaranteed flood with shotguns right here. Go get the health pack as well. Mm -hmm. Very safe. Because, yeah, these sections, this is legendary and all these sections of enemies, especially this hallway, there's like a bunch of flood down at this corridor and they can sometimes not be nice. <laughs> so we're going to throw a frag and try to blow up all the yep. grenades there <laughs> because yeah, if you see your grenades can cause chain reactions from blowing up other grenades in the hallway. So if you kill one flood and then they drop a nade, they can just chain react with a bunch of other grenades and kind of blow you up as well if you're not careful. We saw that at your uh, Corona Relief Done Quick, right? <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> quite fun. It's time to gamble. The infamous Dark Door. We are going to try... All right, audience. One! One! One. <laughs> over and over again until we get a reviver. Yeah, it's a 40% chance. Two. So two! Two! So anything worse than three is very unlucky. Oh. oh. Right. Nope. nope. <laughs> Three. 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 40%, by the way. Yeah, I keep. Okay. Nope. Four. Four. <laughs> Five. Yep. 40% chance, by the EDQ way. EDQ luck. There we go. Yes. All right, all right. Let's go. Yeah, Dark Door is also another pain point in runs. Lots of <laughs> runs can die there as well just from getting not the reviver RNG and yeah, it's just painful sometimes. Come up here, if you jump on the right side of that pillar, just kind of hang to the right, you actually skip the trigger that spawns in all this nastiness here and this room is really not fun to deal with especially on legendary so yeah and that was found surprisingly late people used to hit this uh, trigger to spawn all the enemies for the longest time and it was only like a couple years ago when people found out oh you can just walk along like a smaller corner right there and it'll skip everything so <laughs> it's quite funny oh, was that like 2018 yeah, something like that, which is quite, like, wow for a, a game than from 2001. Yeah. yeah. So coming up is the door that used to be horrible. This door takes 90 seconds to open, so it used to be you either get a reviver or your run's dead. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, this trick's probably very old at this point, but this is Light Bump. Yeah, probably one of the best developments in library. So we're going to teleport up to the top of this door here with some precise inputs. Jump onto this light. Line up perfectly. Uh, and right. this can be kind of finicky here. So just going to hold left at the right pixel alignment. Nice. Nice. And there we go. And that can just not work too sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so in this game, there's a lot of shenanigans with look angles. So it's based off your in-game sensitivity. So right now, a lot of runners use 2.1, which is done for light bump and for maw bump, or the maw teleport, which you'll see later on in the run. And all of those are based off of the look angle precision type things with your in-game sensitivity. So it's very wacky and wild because all your teleports change based on that look angle. 
a little bit of a damage boost. <laughs> yeah, actually, on Legendary, you actually take less damage from carry explosions due to um, how 343 decided to <laughs> incorporate the metals into the game. Yeah, they uh, they accidentally had it carry damage as well, so they do just a lot less damage if you specifically kill them. Yes, and on easy, they do more damage to you. Yeah, so the damage from, like, explosions from carriers is basically inverted. On the MCC version, then. Yes, yes, on MCC. On Gearbox, it is what you would expect. <laughs> well, we get lucky. Let's see? 40%? Nope. 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 Very unlucky. Never lucky. Never lucky. Nice safety health pack there. So if that were a reviver, we'd be skipping all of this uh, this waiting here, mm -hmm. which maybe we'll be able to see. It's not too long of a wait, but it's still guys. nice to get. Yes, the revivers always go down in two shots. Mm -hmm. and, and we're through. Yeah, no, it's not if they don't die. Yeah. Getting that second try there saved about... 10, 15 seconds, I want to say. Yeah, door's still so closed, so we're good. It's pretty nice. Yeah, and we're coming up to the end of library here. Just one more grenade jump through the door, and we're going to come up to probably one of the most infamous tricks now in the run, which is Ghoul, or Banshee out of level. So we'll be seeing quite a lot of shenanigans with that. Definitely not the one in 100. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So a, a flood with a shotgun can land up on that little hole and just dome you. It's uh, it's very rare, but it's uh, it's always a good time when it happens. All right, and this is where you'd use normally use the restroom in the runs. The 63 second unskippable cutscene. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is also a very scary part right here if you're on a good pace because it's like you're waiting for the next mission, which is probably the most skill-intensive part of the run with uh, Banshee out of level now. And just the fact that you get out of library on like a good pace, for instance, which means you got like good RNG on library, you're like very hyped up because you got the RNG. This is where now, the heart's going. Like, yeah. like, like, yeah, heart your heart's going and point. it's... It's like you're trying to breathe and your chat's freaking out. <laughs> Bro's been eaten. <laughs> no, they're getting in there. <laughs> so, yeah, as, as Kronos alluded to, Two Betrayals has had a... If you haven't seen a Halo speed run in a while, oh boy, this is... This level has been completely demolished. Look out! The level is going to start off much as you expect. You got the uh, the four sentinels. Just take them out as clean as you can. This hallway is very troll. Um, we can't let the monitor you have a plasma pistol and a shotgun and just Destroy sentinels Halo. and I'm covenant <laughs> fighting each other. <laughs> Tracking being very kind as usual. And you don't want to kill too many of these covenants or you get some bonus DLC spawns, which we definitely don't want. We need to trigger a detonation yep, on so we just killed the elite, so all the grunts panic and flee. Here's something fun. I'd like to check the thank you. If you hit that button twice in succession, the door opens, but the game doesn't think the door is open. So the game's like, okay, door's closed. I can't spawn in all the enemies, so there's just no enemies. Nice. That's a juicy Oh, yeah. <laughs> juicy <laughs> there. there we go. Um... So there's no enemies here in this entire section. However, that door being open is kind of required in order to complete the level. This level is like the polar opposite of Assault on the Control Room in that we have to literally hit all of these uh, required triggers. And one of them is that door being open, so we do have to fly back. Can we get a, some some clapping for that uh, super slide, though? <laughs> Woo! <That was> sick. <laughs> Woo! And those grenades to launch the Banshee towards him. Shoutouts to Florida Fan for uh, coming up with the idea. <laughs> Very yeah, I did long time ago. not see the lineup for that second grenade. <laughs> that was pretty cool. It still worked. Yeah, so right there we flew down to hit a trigger. So hopefully we should be able to get a checkpoint right here and get all of these enemies to spawn in. We're good. Doesn't be alive. 
Yep. And we're just going to hit this first generator. And you might have noticed that we parked the Banshee inside at a pretty particular spot. We're going to be using that. Yeah. So uh, Bungie didn't want you to soft lock here in case you accidentally lost your Banshee, that one right there. So they're going to spawn in a second one for us, all nice and cozy right there. So we're going to set it up in a very particular spot. And uh, well, let's just say we're going to take a little unintended route here. So we're going to load in the generator room. So the outside is fully unloaded. We're going to jump right into this corner, and we are now out of bounds. May not look it, but we're out of bounds. That's very un <laughs> Can we get some uh, quiet, please? Are okay, we good? All right. Yep. Thank you, Wacky. Little totally for, I totally forgot. <laughs> I totally forgot about the audio cue. Yeah, so now Sloth is flying in a very particular path here. There's a bunch of required triggers to hit that are invisible. You can't see them. And the only way to go through and make sure you've hit all of them is a bunch of like audio cues and certain triggers. One of them is the music right there, which just ended, which means he hit the first three required triggers. And there's around, I want to say, 27 like in their, like this entire yeah, out of yeah. bounds. It's like a lot. So he's flying, like, it might look like he's just flying straight through, but all of these are one second interval timers for all these triggers to check whether you're in them or not. So he's flying in such a specific path that we're just tapping W to stall in certain areas, but we're trying to hold forwards throughout it just to get as fast as possible. In nice. here, that's the explosion trigger. So we hit the first, like, 15, 18? 18? Yeah. yeah. So now that's half of the trick done. We're going to go ahead and load the BSP by getting out and back into the Banshee. So now we load it the next area, and we have to do that again to load in this area. And there what we're we doing there is we're like dipping our toes inbounds so that the, the BSP switches, but then we're getting back out of bounds by entering the out-of-level Banshee. Yeah, and that's so precise because if you fail it, you'll just fall back inbounds and, yeah, that's <laughs> the trick is dead. So, you, like, all of this is so precise. And as you can probably imagine, the game wants you to be inbounds, so if you go even a little bit inbounds, the game just sucks you in. It's like, nope, get back in here. Yeah, and now we're flying up to another BSP trigger here, and that's going to load in this next area. So you can see all the enemies now right out of bounds. And this is uh, this is actually um, like an updated route. This route is ridiculously hard. I think it only saves like seven seconds. And mm -hmm. it's it's gnarly. You got to hit a trigger yeah, so barely right there. underneath yeah. right there. Um, and just be very careful not to fly inbounds. And coming up to how we do the generator, we do need to go inside the generator, but the whole outside is currently loaded in. And there's one little tiny trigger in the hallway that we need to hit that we can't hit from out of bounds. So we actually need to go in bounds here for a second. So definitely check this one out. Line up very particular. He's going to get out. The Banshee's suspended in midair. We hit it, and he's going to get right back out of bounds. Yeah, so then we go do another BSP trigger there. So we're now out of bounds while hitting that. Uh, generator, and we're going to go slowly at this corner to hit this uh, trigger. I definitely barely missed it, but yeah, it's very precise here. Wow. Yeah. You are getting an unlucky cycle here. Yeah, and these are all like second trigger timers once again, so you can see how hard it can be to hit them. There we go. There we go. Yeah, and you have to be very precise because if you go even a tiny bit too far forwards, you'll just clip back inbounds and get sucked in. So you have to just be very careful with all of that. You may not have the context for this, but that second generator that we just did out of bounds is absolutely awful. Yeah, it is normally <laughs> one of the so many enemies. biggest issues with uh, the run way in the past. It was probably the main reset point for a lot of runners, just second generator. Here's a trick called broken door skip. One last load. I want to note one thing for y'all. He didn't get a checkpoint that entire time, ever since he got out of bounds. So yeah, that, I, that was it. <laughs> and yeah, that's cool. That is 
the hardest trick in the run just done. It's a five minute trick basically. And yeah, that was just done flawlessly. So. Absolutely well done. <laughs> Almost flawlessly. The hard way. <laughs> yes. And the whole reason we even need to do all those like loading in the different areas is because of this section here. In order to complete the level, we need to kill five flood. This is what's known as the five flood trigger, fast five, that kind of deal in this section. We can't kill five flood if this area isn't loaded in. So that's the entire reason we're even doing all those complicated loads and getting back in bounds here. We could, if this trigger right here didn't exist, we could do the whole level out of bounds. Yep, so we just hit the five flood. We're just hitting these last couple required triggers. There's one to spawn in this area of enemies, and then one to spawn in the enemies at the far side as well, which is just around this corner here. So if I didn't kill those five flood, we would not have enemies here. And that was it. That is all that you need to do in order to essentially get this last gen here and complete the level. Uh, all these different, like, triggers are just kind of daisy chained together, which is why we had to do all that fun stuff. We couldn't just fly directly to the generators. It would be nice, but honestly, I think it makes this level a lot better having it the way it is. It'd be a little boring otherwise. Yeah, and that's two betrayals. Final target neutralized. All right. Okay. Should be good. Mm -hmm. I think it'll work. So right there, uh, Sloth just did a manip by skipping the cutscene at the correct frame. And what that does is it causes this flood right here to be a reviver. And it does depend on what frame you skip the cutscene. So he was timing it at a very particular time. And once he does that, he's going to line up against the wall, overcharge the flood, and just bump through the wall, effectively skipping the entire mission. And the game's going to be a little confused here. <laughs> oh. Just a little. <laughs> <laughs> Double check that they're all dead. <laughs> Careful. Yes, they do come back once uh, we hit the cutscene. So basically, the start of the level and the end level, the BSPs are basically overlapped, but the AI for the enemies are tied to the other BSP. So when we hit the cutscene, it switches over and the enemies come alive. And there are two chiefs in the cutscene. If they kill the one below the platform, the cutscene could infinitely loop. Yeah, so it's very important that we kill all the enemies there to prevent that from happening. Yeah. And the fact that you can just uh, die to the enemies as well and just revert your checkpoint in other ways too. So once they're all dead, we're just able to just cruise through and we now have to just make our way back. There's a couple enemies in the way to that we need to kind of get through. This is going to be a little scary, but it'll be okay. Let's go back to the and find a ride. They're, uh, <laughs> really good distraction need there. <laughs> They're so oh. preoccupied with the nade, they forget that like, oh, wait. There's a guy there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So now, wow, that was such a clean ending. Like, yeah, you didn't get shot, get at, shot all. at all. Wow. <laughs> like, normally you just get uh, a lot of enemies just target you right there, but that was pretty lucky. <laughs> like, no one just, everything just ignored you. <laughs> Are you going to want the lights down for a cafe? Uh, no, I should be good. Okay. That's so now we're... <laughs> At the end of the level, you can just get in these banshees, and yeah, they don't have collision shenanigans with them. We're going to do some fun things by overlapping these cutscenes. Oh, probably. Nope, you didn't. Do it. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, you could overlap the cutscenes there and just uh, spawn into another part of the level for fun. But yeah, that's just the end of keys, and we're on to the final mission, the Maw. This is a good one. One that Sloth specifically is known for. So I did grind the uh, IL record back in 2020 when I first started playing this game. Yep, so right here. This is going to be a lot of out of bounds and quick succession here, so get ready. We're going to use this door to just clip out of bounds right here. And we're going to do a lot of platforming. And this, these ceilings are very slippery. They uh, didn't really, you know, 
think you'd get up here, so they didn't do anything to the physics naturally. Yeah, and you have to do some very precise platforming here. Just lining up for a teleport. And yeah, one, one pixel, pixel off. off. Maybe. My look angle might be off. There okay. we go. There we go. So that was a super far teleport, basically all the way past the cafe. It's, it's probably pretty hard to see where we're going, but um, essentially we just skipped the entire cryopod section, the entire bridge, all that stuff. Well done. Yeah, and just grab the health, uh, the overshield because we're going to be using it for a rocket jump in the run. So hopefully. hopefully. <laughs> So we're going to run past all these guys. There's a lot of them. Nice. Yeah. Clean. Should be enough. Yeah, no, we should be good. Yeah. And we're going to grab the rockets from the armory. The whole reason that we're doing this is essentially, you know, the flood are big and bad. They're trying to get off. We definitely can't let that happen. So we are going to essentially blow up the Pillar of Autumn by overloading the reactors. So here coming up, this is going to be a very cool little rocket boost. Very nice, one red. <laughs> All the way to the top. Now at, yes. this, now at this point, we just need to open up the couplings, and the game didn't expect you to get up here this quick, so it's a little glitchy. It doesn't look like they exploded. I promise you they exploded. Once this uh, gets to a certain point, they will then explode. And just these two more. Like so, and that's the reactor room. Clean. And we're out of there. We're out of there before the monitor even had time to say hi, basically. <laughs> yep, and we know that all the reactors are blown up, the door opens. You can just walk here before the elevator comes down, it's fine. But you do want to jump. <laughs> you don't you get stuck in the jump. floor. Every now and then we get a clip of the elevator going up, but you just sort of staying on the ground and just looking up as it goes away. Uh, you, you need to jump there, otherwise you're not actually on the elevator. It's a little funny. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're on to the final part of the game, which is the Warthog Run. So a three minute driving section, or three minutes, 30 seconds, yeah, 30 about. seconds about, yep. yeah. And yeah, so uh, coming up here, essentially, this driving is, I, I want to say it's a somewhat newish development, like the route that we take. We used to go through the center and sort of like mm -hmm. maneuver around, but uh, we found that you can, by sort of angling the hog correctly, you can actually just drive along the edge here, which Sloth is going to show. Mm -hmm. So instead of going through the center here, I'll be going up here. There's about maybe one second per section of the level. Big time save. Massive time save. Yeah. And it's pretty precise how to drive that. You have to kind of turn in weird ways to just not lose speed there. So, yeah, it's very cool to see. Yeah. So this is, um, as we said, like five or six minutes of driving. So to get all the way to the end, and basically just gonna take a very particular route. So um, while we're doing this, I have a fun question for all of us. So what so what got us all into speed running this game? Start with you, Sloth. Well, MCC came out in 2014 on the Xbox One and the multiplayer didn't work at all. <laughs> so um, I just decided to play the campaign over and over again, get the achievements. So that's pretty much it. Was it like the speed run achievements? Yeah, yeah, yeah all the speed run achievements to get goat roped. <laughs> Shout outs to Goat Rope. Shout outs to Goat Rope. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I was bored during COVID lockdown and started kind of just playing CE. And I, I kind of knew about the speed run for a while and just decided to give it a shot. And the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah, for me, I watched uh, Garish's run in 2017. Ooh. I was. <laughs> I was a Skyrim speedrunner, and he ran Oblivion, which is pretty cool. So I saw he ran CE, and I thought it looked cool. So I ended up running it, and yeah, I became a CE runner, and that was me into Halo. Yeah. How about you, Wacky? Uh, one day I was just watching some YouTube. Uh, I think a, a Half-Life 2 speedrun came up. I watched that. 
from uh, GDQ, and then I watched, you know, in, in the recommended, I got Garish, and I watched that, and then I watched uh, the Goat Rope video, and uh, somewhere along the lines, there was a, a link to a Discord for uh, HaloRuns.com, and, <laughs> and I joined the community from there, and the rest is history. Did you say HaloRuns.com? I did. HaloRuns.com for all of your Halo speedrunning needs. <laughs> Yep, so we're coming up to this last minute of the run. We're going to do some fun tricks. Get your Kevin Turtles in the chat. <laughs> 360 swag. 360 swag. Yeah, if you just if you just drive off this going straight, we get a clip every now and then of someone doing that and then inevitably dying. So we do it in a way that's a little more swag. Yeah, that's the frog. <laughs> Two seventy. Two seventy. Good enough. Good enough. <laughs> and now the last trick of the run. Barrels. Barrels. So, um, the how you're supposed to do is you're supposed to get out of the warthog here and have this big dramatic, you know, rush to the end. Instead, we're just, just gonna flip through with the warthog. Not oh, the blue oh. barrel. And oh, time's oh going God. to be once the <laughs> screen fades to white here. Which is... And... Time. time. Oh. GG. Oh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so any words, Sloth? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I'd like to thank Brian Otto 100% for getting me to actually do this. I wasn't planning on doing it. Um, I'm pretty nervous, so <laughs> first event. But um, yeah, he showed up in Halo Runs, posted the link, and I thought, nope, maybe I should probably do this. So that's pretty cool. Um, shout out to Halo Runs, all the CE runners. Um, also... I'd like to shout out my dad as well, who's watching. Um, he's currently uh, battling stage four brain cancer at the moment. So I um, just wanted to say that I love him. And, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Shut them down, we'll need them later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to say a special thank you to everybody that came out to watch any of our runs throughout the week and a massive shout out to Sloth for an excellent finale run. One more round of applause for him. That was a very good performance of Halo. Uh, and thank you all so much for coming. That is the end of our runs for GDQ at PAX West. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your time and thanks for being a part of it. We hope to see you all next year. So maybe consider coming to a GDQ sometime. They're pretty cool. Thank you all. Have a good rest of your PAX.